For more, we're joined by South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator, where else should we look from this point on? Well, you don't have to really be Sherlock Holmes to figure out what the Iranians are doing. They have been trying to kill American soldiers and have been doing so in Iraq for years by putting in EFPs, IED devices, into Iraq to kill our American soldiers. Uh, when the uh, International Atomic Energy Commission put pressure on them to find out about their nuclear program, they got Hezbollah, a proxy of Iran, in Lebanon to start a war with Israel. They fund Hamas, a terrorist organization in the Gaza Strip. Now they're here in our backyard. So they've been a tremendously regional uh, uh, power player trying to destabilize the Mideast, but their ambitions are greater, their tentacles are greater than the region of the Mideast. They're now in our own backyard trying to assassinate people. And if you ask me the number one national security threat the world faces, it would be a nuclear-armed Iran, and this is a tipping point for me regarding Iran. So let's start with the plot here at home, and then I have some broader questions about what we do about Iran as the country in general. Starting with the plot, there's been some red flags read about or said about uh, this man at the center of the plot. The New York Times quoted some of his friends saying he's perennially disheveled, hopelessly disorganized, <coughs> incompetent, not a zealot, uh, no interest in religion or politics. Uh, the man that we're seeing on our screen, normally 48 hours after an event like this happens, some sort of plot like this happens, we start hearing about anti-Western rhetoric, we start hearing about extremists. Uh, why aren't we hearing about that in relation to this man? Well, I can only say that the FBI director and the Attorney General of the United States said that this was a plot blessed by the higher-ups in Iran. But you don't need to look at this plot to determine what the Iranian regime is capable of. They're trying to destabilize Iraq. They're trying to destabilize Afghanistan. They're supporting the Taliban, even though they're ideologically different, to hurt our efforts in Afghanistan. They have supported Hezbollah to attack Israel. They're supporting Hamas. So they have a desire to destabilize the world. And this plot uh, in our backyard, as bizarre as it sounds, is not inconsistent with the way they think. But we've, this you, regime is dangerous, uh, and I think they're crazy. Well, <laughs> and some people would definitely agree with you on that, Senator. But you made a, a, quite a list of, of what Iran's been doing. Why do we right. need this plot in our backyard to get tougher on Iran. I, the, the, I'm with you, Jen. I, what I think the president should do is tonight or tomorrow make a speech to the American people laying out the threats that the threat Iran presents, uh, their bad behavior all over the world, why sanctions must be increased. Nothing would please me more than to change the behavior of this regime who is trying to develop a nuclear weapon through sanctions. But obviously this is not working. The Russians and the Chinese have to get on board. The sanctions should bite the Iranian regime. Stop buying their oil. It would hurt the Iranian people in the short term, but it would help them in the long term. The sanctions, the, uh, the Obama administration, have been pushing are not working. So they what need to else? Ratchet it up. Let's, uh, let's stop buying their oil. Say if you do business with the Central Bank of Iran, you're on uh, you're on the bad list. What about so military go after action? The bank. All right. What I'm trying to lay out here is how you could change the behavior of the regime without military action. Russia and China have not been on board. They should be on board. If I were president of the United States, I'd make a speech tonight talking about the threat the world would face from a nuclear-armed Iran. I would talk about all the things I've just described, about how they're trying to destabilize the world. And now they're in our own backyard trying to kill people in America in a way that is completely outside of acceptable behavior. And I would suggest that if sanctions are not going to work, that all options remain on the table. And we're at a point now that their nuclear program is probably so redundant, a surgical strike probably won't work. Military action should be the last resort. It would open Pen Pandora's box. But if they get a nuclear weapon, Jenna, it will empty Pandora's box. So I hope the President of the United States will let the Iranians know that if you continue down this road, we're going to do everything we can, all options on the table, more sanctions, but it would also include the military option. If they get a nuclear weapon, it's you said, throw you the world said, Senator, into chaos. if you were president, are you thinking about it? I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just saying just anybody, anybody in his job, 
President Obama's job needs to let the world know where we're going with Iran. Our candidates for president, jobs are important. It's the number one issue, but there are more important things, not more important things, there are equally important things going on in the world. Where are our candidates for president? Everybody wanting to be commander in chief should tell the American people, here's the threat Iran presents and here's how I would deal with it. What I would suggest is that we deal with increased sanctions that bite, that change behavior. Clearly what we're doing doesn't work. Take their banking system and cripple it. Stop buying their oil. Put pressure on this regime to stop. And if they won't stop, and they still try to get a nuclear weapon and destabilize the world, kill people in America, then we need to put the military option squarely on the table and mean it when we say it. Senator Graham, always nice to have you on the show. We appreciate your perspective today. I look forward Thank to having you, you back.